Lesson five in this series is this is uh, further aspects of the wheat harvest and the processing of the wheat, as we've been sharing with you, the blade and then the ear. And now we want to go into the full corn in the ear. Because this is so important, <clears throat> this next scripture is so important, we want to share it with you and keep it at the forefront of your memory for this uh, this lesson. Uh, in John twelve twenty four, verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat, except a corn of the kingdom fall into your ground and die, it abides alone. Now, let me s just comment for a moment. I think I did earlier but uh, in the series, but let me comment again. Dying means it looks like you've lost the essence or the impartation of the seed. But the life within the seed cracks the shell and eats the pulp around it, which gives it the strength to begin to grow and push through the earth, pushing aside rocks, pushing aside earth, to reach up to the S-O-N, I mean the sun. So it produces the blade and then the ear and then the f ear develops into the full corn or the result of that which was planted that looks like what was planted. It does not necessarily look like what was planted when it's a blade, neither does it look like what was planted, what was planted when it's an ear, but when the full corn comes, then it looks like. But if it does not die, if it does not go through a process that seems like it's dying, and God begin to break forth the shell of your understanding around that seed of truth, it abides alone. But if it die, and remember the last lesson we said, the Holy Spirit must even teach us how to die. We don't know how to die, and we don't know what that means. For each person, it might be dying to a different thing. It might be dying in a different way. We must let the Holy Spirit lead us. Because you see, when He, the Spirit of Truth, is come, He will lead you and guide you into something you don't know. So when we come to this scripture, we say, Holy Spirit, I don't know what it means to fall into the ground and die. Holy Spirit, I don't want to abide alone. I want to learn how to die so that much fruit comes from the dying. The full corn in the ear, it applies the, of the full development of the ability to hear. And might I add this, the full development of the ability to hear and obey. Many hear, but they don't hear with a heart to obey, and therefore nothing comes of what they hear. They have an academic knowledge. They have much understanding in the natural, and maybe even in literal, but they don't have, they don't have substance. Because substance in God and in the wheat comes from letting God do a work in your heart. The wheat and the tares look much the same, even though you can tell the difference when they come to the blade and the ear stage. But the tear is empty-headed. And when it's fully matured, it still stands upright. But when the wheat is fully matured, it graciously bows over and bends in submission ready for the harvest when I've learned and let me ask you this if that's the truth and I believe it is am I fully ready for harvest when I've learned submission I mean truly learned submission not man's idea of submission but God's idea of submission and learned how to fully submit to the Holy Spirit so he can lead me into the things I know nothing about well, let's continue on in this. In Job 5 and 26, it says, As a shock of purpose, a shock of corn. What is the purpose of a shock of corn? The fully developed corn is called a shock. It comes in harvest season. 
in Isaiah 28 and 28, it talks about the one of the purposes for uh, full-grown wheat or full-grown corn is it provides uh, the process by which wheat is ground for bread. And remember, Isaiah 55 and 10 says it gives seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Basically, most of the time we've been talking in this series so far about seed for the sower. How does God develop the seed? How can we recognize the seed is maturing? And again, I want to come back to, it's not how much I know of the process. It's how much I give myself to the process. There are many who do not have a, a great access to the, to the Word of God, to the Bible, to the Scriptures in many countries. But they're more mature than we in North America who have our theological degrees. I remember one day I was listening to Richard, Richard Wombrandt uh, and uh, God spoke to me. He said, Bill, Richard Wombrandt is mature beyond his theology. And some years later when I was being ordained and I was looking at the men who were uh, the group who I was being ordained under. There were some el older men there, tremendous men of God, sweet, precious men of God. And the Lord said to me, they are mature beyond their theology. See, I do not have to know the theology to, 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 to be mature, but I do have to have experienced the Word, whether I understand what I've experienced and can explain it or not. And so there are people today in the earth, in other countries and possibly a few here in North America, who are mature beyond their theology. In other words, they can't explain what they feel or why they've come the way they've come except that God has brought them there and yet their theology may be further back in their understanding. Their academic theology and academic understanding may be further back than their experience. So there are two purposes for growing wheat. To be replanted for a new crop or seed for the sower or to be made into bread to feed the hungry. In the next section on this series, we want to take some time on that very principle. What does it mean to be made bread for the hungry? It is important for this end time and for what I believe God's getting ready to do and what we are getting ready both as individuals, the church, and the world to go through. There must be bread for the hungry. We're coming into times of famine on different levels, both naturally and spiritually. And if we're not prepared, we will accuse God when the problem does not lie with God. God has provided everything we need, but we have not learned to store up the corn and store up the wine and store up the oil and store up these things. So we're going to talk for a little bit in the next couple of lessons about what it means to, to, to be processed by God to become bread for the hungry. Here is our contact information and we ask you to pray into what we've shared and ask God if you are going through some of this stuff and don't know it because you've not had teaching. Remember, God is producing something in the earth. It's not just an exercise in futility. It's not just healing the sick, raising the dead, and casting out devils. It's producing a character and a nature. It's producing something that God wants to give to the hungry of the world. Not only in some sovereign things, but to make you into something he can give the world and that will bring them life. Here's our contact information, our snail mail address. If you prefer to, to send us help by check or send questions uh, by snail mail, that's fine. Our um, 
address, our, our, our web address is there, and on that page, of those pages actually, you will find courses that we have written that can be taken for ecclesiastical degrees in, um, through the Institute for Strategic Christian Leadership. Uh, you can also find DVD courses and DVD me individual messages and CD messages all available, available for purchase. You'll also find a donate button which we encourage you to ask the Lord uh, what he would have you do and you can uh, donate through PayPal uh, using your credit card or your debit card. Uh, all donations are gratefully accepted and can be receded through the Institute for Strategic Christian Leadership under which uh, Dr. William J. Hurst Ministries functions. Uh, you see there also my email. Please send your questions that way so that in the uh, both the researching and the answering of your questions, I don't miss anything you, you are asking about or commenting about. This is Dr. William J. Hurst of Dr. William J. Hurst Ministries and the Institute for Strategic Christian Leadership, teaching all nations the practical word of God and mentoring students one student at a time.